All right, guys, so, so much stuff happening here in the last couple days, just trying to get everything taken care of and checked off that long grocery list we made yesterday in terms of getting the house ready to batten down the hatches for a few months while we leave. So first of all, the plumber was here earlier today. He came, did a walkthrough, made a list for Phil of all the things he's going to need to do the installation 8.30 tomorrow morning. So Phil is actually currently at the plumbing supply store getting everything on that list. Then tomorrow, him and the plumber will work to get the boiler in to finish connecting all the last little pecs. We got a hold of the propane people. They came and dropped off the propane tanks earlier today and they will be here again tomorrow to install it while our plumber is here installing the boiler. Then what I am currently doing, what I am checking off the list is I am tackling the mold issue. Yes, this is vinegar. Vinegar is the nemesis of mold. Uh, apparently soft goods, hard goods, you name it. Vinegar is basically what you should go to to get rid of it. The good news is that we do not have a horrible case of mold, but it, we do have a burgeoning case. I was definitely noticing that some of our soft goods in certain areas were starting to get a little bit moldy. So the rug that was that cute, cute, cute rug that was in here before that I got last time I was up here, there was one little spot where the humidity was coming up from the basement and kind of getting trapped in the rug and I was starting to see a little bit of mold. So took the whole rug outside and sprayed all of it down with vinegar. Same thing for those giant pastel pink uh, lampshades. Oh my god, these lamps are huge. <laughs> and I also gave the couch right here, this adorable couch that I love so much, I also gave it a once over. Now, is this the most important thing that needs to be done? No, it doesn't. There are other things that are higher up on the list in terms of priorities than this. However, we still have two and a half days and according to the weather forecast, today is the last day that it's going to be sunny and dry. And this process, which is basically just soaking everything in vinegar, is much more pleasant if it can happen outside. One, for the smell because whoo, that stuff is strong, not toxic, just strong and unpleasant. And also because then it will dry outside. It'll dry faster and it'll, it'll just dry period. Because the reason we have mold is because we have humidity in this house, which means, you know, things aren't drying in here. So even if I would spray them down, I would kill the mold with the vinegar, but then it would just kind of stay damp and gross. And that just seems very much less than ideal. So, Everything currently out on the porch, sitting and aerating and getting a good coating of vinegar. I've also tackled some of the more important things like there was mold starting to grow on basically all of the gorgeous antiques around here. That spinning wheel, all of those mirror and the mirror frames, all of this lovely woodwork is just sitting here getting a little bit too damp and certain surfaces, particularly varnished surfaces it seems like, it's starting to grow. So I have gone through so much vinegar right now. This thing was full this morning and I don't know if you can see, yeah, we can kind of see it is, it is more than halfway empty in just a couple of hours. That's more than two liters of vinegar I have used just killing mold in this house. So gonna keep going with that while we still have some light outside. Once Phil gets back, we will probably start tackling the rock wool in the basement, which I got earlier today. That was a fun little trip. Now I have a lot of rock wool and we are going to be installing it. Main priority is definitely, you know, around the exterior of the house right next to the sill plate. Just try to keep all that cold air from coming up from the basement into the rest of the house. Trying futilely probably to keep our heating bill this winter reasonable. So I'm going to keep spritzing and spraying and I'll see you later for some rock wool installation. Now we were 
were rapidly approaching our last days at the house, so obviously we were working super hard, but we weren't working so hard that I couldn't stop to take a little break for skincare. And my go-to product in that region is definitely the UFO3 by For Real Sweden, who is kindly sponsoring yet another video. Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I've been using mine for several months now. I had it in Montreal, I brought it to Norway with me, and of course, I'm gonna bring it here to Nova Scotia as well because keeping my skin clean and hydrated is extra important when I'm here and renovating and just constantly surrounded by dust and debris and basically everything that's the nemesis of happy, healthy skin. Now, I realize that this might not necessarily look like a spa, but that doesn't mean that I can't feel like I'm in a spa because the UFO3 allows me to just pamper myself, indulge in a little bit of self-care and enjoy the same sophisticated spa technology, but without ever having to leave the comfort of my own home. The gentle heat helps the active ingredients from your mask to absorb deep into your skin so you get that optimal hydration in only two minutes a day, perfect for those of us who have a jam-packed schedule. Now, as for their masks, they are all lovely. I've enjoyed every one that I've tried, but I do have a couple favorites to recommend. I've really been enjoying the H2 Overdose on nights where my skin is just feeling extra dry. And lately, I have also been really enjoying the Call It A Night to use right before bed. They're both very enjoyable. And if you haven't actually seen me use it, if you're wondering how on earth does this work, basically you just take off this little ring here, you open the mask and put it on right here on top, lock it back in place, and then you can either use the app, connect it to the app on your phone, or you can go with their offline mode and you can choose whether you want it to cool your skin or to warm it. So if that sounds lovely and you would like to give your skin a nice hydrating, refreshing boost, you can use the link in the description to get the UFO3 at 30% off. Plus, if you happen to be one of the first 50 buyers, you can get an extra 10% off by using my code at checkout. So thanks once again to For Real Sweden and the UFO3 for sponsoring this video. So I've been dismantling uh, heavy bit of old PEX tubing for heating for potable water and uh, none of it is still good because of the freeze so I've just been at it and cutting sections and then fishing them out I'm making myself some space so I can run the new PEX uh, for the heating system and later on when we do the the repexing the rewiring for all the potable water and the upstairs bathroom as well already cut all those lines at the other end now I'm just fitting them out this way I won't ever get confused about what's a new line what's an old line and you know cut the wrong thing or keep a line forever there and thinking it's useful when it's been abandoned and when they're too long like this I just cut a smaller section It's really a little bit easier to manage. Grab everything, make an eat file. More the same. So Phil had pulled out all the old pecs, and as you saw in the previous few episodes, we'd been running all of the new PEX lines down to the basement, and we'd connected everything to the baseboard heaters on the main floor, but we didn't connect anything in the basement. We just left the ends of the pipes kind of dangling loose in the ceiling of the basement because before we connected them you know, into a proper circuit, we wanted to insulate the cavities that were formed by sort of the sill plate, the rim joist, and the floor joists. If you're confused about that, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, but this being an old house especially this area is one of the major sources of heat loss in many homes so we wanted to seal it up and we thought that would be easier to access before we had connected all of the pex tubing and whatnot all right it is rock wool time and uh, the kind we're using at the moment has an r factor of 22 and when i went to get them the guy at the store asked me well do you have stud bays that are 16 on center or 24 on center. And I was like, my man, 
the house was built in 1902, there nothing on center. That was very much not a thing back then. So head fill measure, turns out that the average distance between joists is somewhere between 26 and 28 inches. In the end it didn't actually matter though, because they didn't have any of the wider widths, so we're stuck with these currently in like 15 and a quarter inch widths. They're meant to fit perfectly between average 16 inch studs, but uh, that's not gonna happen here. So let's get these downstairs and let's start insulating. Oh, we got my glove, got my mask, got my insulation. We're ready to go. Wait, uh, forgot one thing. Got the bread knife. So then we quickly fell into a rhythm that went something like this. First, we'd tear out the top few rows of bricks to allow us just to access that whole cavity in there formed by the sill plate and the floor joists. And most of this time, it would expose a lot of blown in insulation that had fallen down when they tried to insulate the walls. This is the same insulation that we had found in the cavity between the brick veneer and the field stone. And there seemed to be some confusion about this situation in the previous episodes. So let me clarify, this insulation was not put here on purpose. It was an innocent bystander, you might say, in the great blown in insulation event of the 90s. So when they shot the insulation into the stud bays, it just fell all the way down to the bottom of the walls. Thank you, gravity. But because this is balloon frame construction, there's no floor plate at the bottom of that wall to stop it from just continuing to fall out of the wall opening and then therefore into the space between the bricks and the field stones. Gotta love balloon frame construction, am I right? So then there was all this loose insulation just floating around in most of those cavities and we'd clean all of that up, pull it out, and if it was dry, we would actually save it and often repack it back into the walls. I mean, it was still perfectly good insulation, so why waste it? But instead of just trusting on gravity to keep it there, we then also added a layer of rock wool to the cavity, which also had the added benefit of increasing our R value and just better insulation. So the rhythm that we fell into was first Phil would measure the stud bay and he would relay those measurements to me. 24 and a half. And I would cut down a section of insulation to that size and this would fit perfectly in the cavity, keeping the blown in trapped in the wall and helping seal the whole area off from cold air. repeated this process all the way around the basement and the thing is because this is such an old house and nothing was standardized each stud bay was a different size sometimes by a matter of several inches so each section of insulation had to be custom measured and custom cut which meant that there really wasn't a way to speed up this process or batch the tasks day here before we leave the house for quite a while potentially all winter and we still have so 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 much to do it's gonna be super busy we have scheduled so many things today we've got the propane people are coming to install the propane and just run all of the lines for that so like the propane into the boiler and the air intake and exhaust and there's gonna be holes punched in the side of my house fun 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 
Then we've also got Don coming. I think it's gonna be a long day for him and Phil as well. He's going to be installing the boiler and then, you know, getting the propane run into the boiler, getting the boiler ready to accept all of our plumbing lines which are not finished yet. So that's another big ticket item that we have to do. We have to go around and just finish doing all of the last little bits of running the packs, basically everything, just connecting everything that's in the basement at the moment. Today is, today is gonna be spent a lot of the day in the basement, unfortunately, because it's a gorgeous day outside. And then whenever I have a free moment, both I'm gonna be spending a lot of that time going around and insulating the perimeter of the house. We got a lot of that done last Last night and honestly it, it's probably went a lot faster with two people than it's gonna go just me alone but if I can't uh, there's only so many hands that are needed on the boiler in that tiny little area so I'm gonna make myself useful and just try to finish what we didn't get to yesterday with the insulation so huzzah <laughs> so much work today accepting thoughts and prayers that we get this done on time so here we've got Phil and Don working together to install a boiler, which they're mounting on a shiny new piece of three quarter inch plywood that Phil and I had mounted in preparation for this moment. We wanted this to be really sturdy so that it would stand the test of time and also, you know, so we could just make all of our connections nice and neat and clean as that's exactly what tickles our brain. So Shannon has been working on the insulation and whatever it takes to reach, Shannon does. Mm -hmm. So jump ahead to munch later in the day when all the workers had gone home and it was just Phil and I left trying to hook up the last bits of plumbing so that we could join it to the boiler and make sure that we had heat in the house, finally. Now we were rapidly running out of time and a lot of the footage was lost with my iPhone so there are massive gaps in our last hours at the house but thankfully I did manage to capture at least some of the most important moments. Well, it has been uh, an incredibly long night. We are still working, but we have, wow, we have one really bad shadow. There we go. It has been an incredibly long night. It is almost 10 p.m. and we are about to finish up the very last fitting of this entire uh, plumbing adventure. So let's do it. Let's do it. We have heating! <laughs> so officially, officially done and plumbed and gonna have heating when we leave tomorrow in like just a few hours. And of course it couldn't be just that simple because we actually have a small leak. To be and fair, I did not install that, so... Yeah, this is on the part that our plumber did, but it's also he had a super long day too, so he might have just been a little tired at the end of the day. We're problem solving, we're problem solving. Also because I do know somebody is gonna be curious about it. We did install a couple heaters down in the basement here. We've got one on this side, we've got one on the other side as well. And we're just kind of hoping that that's gonna help to keep the air a little bit drier down here in the winter, also in the summer if needed, and uh, help us a little bit with that mold problem. Yeah. So then we left it pretty much like that to go off and do some contracts. Fall and winter is always a busy season for our industry and last year was no exception. In fact, some of you actually came out to see me last winter as I toured around the US and it was very lovely to meet you all. Plus for those of you who have been following the channel before the house videos, if you were here for the crafting videos, this is also when I filmed the patchwork bag. And now comes the interesting part. We decided we should really squeeze in one more quick trip back to the house that fall. We had roughly a week long hole in our schedule. So we had planned one more trip up to Nova Scotia just to do some last winterizing and insulating stuff. But in the last minute, some family stuff came up for me. So Phil went back and did some work by himself. And that is why this gets interesting because 
you know, he was there for an entire week and I have exactly 28 pieces of media to show for it. So the visuals we have to work with here are a bit spotty, but the highlights include he patched some of the holes in the drop ceiling, actually right above my head here, with the cardboard packaging from all of our heaters. Well, we kept all of the cardboard and honestly, it's been pretty ridiculous how much we've been using it. And actually, if you see it pop up in future videos down the road, feel free to shout it out in the comments. Let's see if we can keep track of all the numerous ways and places that it's come in handy. He also made some modifications, let's say, to our circular saw. So I cut the cord of the circular saw, so I fixed it, and while I was there, I made it a bit safer. He made our front door much more weather tight. So this door had light gaps all around, um, so... Took off the old uh, weather stripping. It was all crap. Put new one in, but more importantly, this strike plate was installed like four or five, uh, a quarter inch this way, uh, and the door was all loosey, so it was not even pressing against the weather stripping. So I just moved the plate back where it should. And now we've got a tight door. There is no light anywhere no light no draft good he also changed the basement stairs around now these stairs have never been great like just the way that the space is laid out it is very very tight to go down into the basement and before the stairs had a pretty comfortable rise and run meaning that it was easy and natural to walk up and down them but that meant that there was a really tight headspace as you had to duck under the floor joists like even me i'm pretty sure and i had to duck and contort and actually go backwards in order to not hit my head so as a short-term fix he just flipped the stringers around so now the rise to run ratio is absolutely breakneck they are definitely not the most comfortable stairs to use, although honestly, they're still better than the attic stairs, but it does mean we have a lot more room to haul large objects out of the basement. That's gonna come in handy later. Then he changed out the old mercury thermostats for some new ones. The old ones ended up getting repurposed. They were added on to the line of basement radiators that I showed you earlier, but that actually ended up kind of backfiring on us later, as we'll find out in later episodes. And then lastly, and this is a doozy, he changed out the threshold from the door. So for some context, let's hark back to this clip from earlier that summer. So now that it's raining, we can see what happening with the gutter situation so lots of water coming on here creating all the damage and also the general roof just splatters like crazy right here probably what rotted this year so no surprise there the threshold is rotten and to walk us through what it is that he did to fix it is Phil himself one of the project that I had for this trip at the house was to try to fix the side door. It was only rotten wood under the door and the metal threshold of the door was completely floating around, which meant there was no way to seal the water or air from coming in. So I am removing everything that is rotten or not good anymore. And eventually I'm going to build a wooden frame box and spray foam all around the door to try to seal it back up to prevent further damage to the inside flooring and to help keep the heat inside. So we now have a big hole. I removed the whole the uh, all rotten threshold that was there. Uh, used to be wood. 
can see even the door jam here that on this side is all rotten. I was considering not changing the door because a new door is 300 bucks, but we'll see. I might just uh, rebuild another box there uh, so I can reinstall the metal threshold, put uh, expanding foam everywhere and call it a day and uh, when we change the siding and everything put a brand new door in because I feel like it's wasting money to put a good door in now it's just gonna get damaged in construction so I'm not gonna spend 500 bucks on an outside door frame so yeah, box building time now prepare yourselves because next week we will be jumping forward, far forward in time and going live with the house renovation timeline because here's the thing, I love autumn. I love Halloween and spooky vibes and all the coziness. And because we were traveling last October, I didn't get to film any spooky content. And I'm just super missing out on all the cozy autumn vibes. So we're going to race forward a full year just for the month of October to do some really cozy autumn content. We'll be doing an office makeover. We'll be exploring my attic. There will be antiques and apple crumble and autumn vibes for weeks. It's just, it's gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait. And if you also can't wait and you wanna get a jump start on that, if you wanna get some sneak peeks on the current house situation, there is a bit of a spoiler video up on the second channel. Now it is a long one. It's perfect for running in the background while you work on other things. So if that interests you at all, I highly recommend to go check it out. It should be right here. Maybe there I'll, I'll go. Feel me. Oh wow, the exposure is crap. Wow.